Hey everybody, it's Julie. Welcome back to Row & Co Farms. As you can see behind me, I have a massive harvest. We're gonna be working on preserving all these different items uh, today, and we have lots and lots of work to do. We've got some hot peppers that we're gonna ferment and make a hot sauce with. We've got some sweet peppers. Um, I think we're just gonna chop those up and freeze them. Um, the okra, we're either going to dehydrate or I may go ahead and chop and bread these and freeze them so they're ready to fry. Um, I got a big, massive bag of Vidalia onions, uh, which are local to us, and I'm going to just store those in the pantry. Those should not need any special storage. Um, if they start to go soft in the coming months, we'll cut them up and freeze them. Um, I got lots of pears here from our orchard outside. These aren't quite ready yet. They're still a little bit hard. They're not ripe yet, so we're gonna give those a few more days, but that will be coming up too, more pear preservation. I got a bushel of apples here. We'll turn those into some um, slices and some applesauce. And then I have a box of sweet potatoes, also from a farmer's market, um, that we will just be putting into pantry storage. So I don't really have to do a whole lot with those, but I just wanted to show you everything uh, that we're going to be putting away into storage for this winter. Um, so you don't always have to grow everything yourself, guys. You can buy it from a local market. I did not buy um, all these things. Some of them we grew, but some of them we bought, and that's okay. We got a really good deal on the bushel of apples. And usually you can find really great deals if you go to the markets, and instead of buying just a small basket with five or six apples, ask them how much for the whole box. This whole box was $36. So I think that's a great deal. Um, they are local. I don't think they're organic, but they follow organic practices, which is fine with us. Um, and then the onions, I'm actually not sure where those came from. These were already kind of pre-bagged, um, but Vidalia onions grow locally near us. And so I will accept that those are locally grown and most onions aren't treated too bad. So these should be, these should be good. So let's get to it. Let's fill the dehydrator first with um, some of our okra so that can get started. Then we'll work on fermenting the peppers um, and then we will get some of the other stuff put away. So let's get to it. I just like to cut mine in nice chunks because once it's dehydrated, it's gonna shrivel up a little bit. You see how this one sounds different and crunchy? This is no good. We do not want to use this one. It's, it's gone too long. We didn't harvest it soon enough. So we won't use that one. This one is the same way. So we won't use that one either. You want them to be really tender like this. They shouldn't make a, a super crunchy sound when you go through them. They should be soft. So here I'm just gonna take all of my sweet peppers, bell peppers, and chop those up. And we're going to be bagging them and putting them in the freezer. So that way they'll be portioned out and easier to use in future recipes like soups, stews, and fajitas.
So let's take all of our hot peppers and we're gonna make a fermented hot sauce uh, by kind of chopping them really roughly and putting them into this jar. Um, then we'll be covering them with water, adding a little bit of salt, and then we'll let those ferment for seven to 10 days. And then we will blend all that up together and season it a little bit and we'll have our own uh, homemade hot sauce. So let's get started by chopping uh, roughly our um, hot peppers. I have a combination here of some of these uh, like cayenne peppers um, as well as some jalapenos and a couple of other assorted uh, spicy peppers in here that we grew. So let's get started and I'll show you how we do it. So for these long skinny ones, I just like to chop off the end and sometimes just cut them in half and toss those in. You can also leave them whole. The jalapenos, I just cut into chunks like this. You can add any combination of peppers that you like. I'm also going to be chopping up one onion to add a little bit of flavor, as well as one head of garlic as well. So now that all the peppers are chopped, we're going to place them all into the jar with our onions and garlic, and then we're going to be adding water and salt. Now to our peppers here, we're going to be adding two tablespoons of sea salt. Generally, the rule of thumb for fermenting is to make sure that your brine that covers your vegetables tastes like seawater. So once I top off with water in this recipe, I will taste the liquid. If it tastes like seawater, we're just right. If it's too salty, we can add a little more water to dilute it. If it's not salty enough, we can add a little more salt. Once that's finished, we wanna make sure all the contents are below the brine, and we will let this sit for seven to 10 days to complete the ferment. Just gonna store all my onions in this crate here, and we'll just, uh, watch them in there. If they start to get soft at any point, we will chop them and freeze them. But hopefully we won't have to do that. familiar with Vidalia onions. Um, they're a Georgia grown onion uh, from Vidalia, Georgia, <laughs> of course, and it's like a sweet uh, yellow onion. So we love these. They're really, really good. Um, we're well known for our onions here in Georgia. Hey guys, so let's continue with our big preservation day by doing our apples. Uh, I got this batch of apples from a local uh, farm stand. Um, I got a pretty good deal on it. It was like 35 or $36 for the whole bushel. And I'm going to peel these and core them. I have a little uh, machine that I got, um, which you use for that. It's not a machine, but it's, you, you know, it's a manual thing that you use, but um, I got it at Goodwill for $2, so score. <laughs> so we're gonna use that. So let's peel and core these apples and we'll make some applesauce with those and maybe do some slices as well. So let's see how far we get. Come on guys, let's do it. Okay.
Well, clearly I need to do some work on my method, but there we go. It takes out the core and it kind of slices the apple like this, which I think is perfect. So we'll use them just like that. And then these will go for our vinegar. And I'll go ahead and put a jar here to put those in. I don't mind if there are a little bit of skins in here. That's not really going to um, affect me too bad. I'm not worried about that. So we will just do this again and again and again until we're finished. I, I like this thing. This is, I think, going to be way better than what I've done in the past. the majority of the skin off. I think I'm happy with that. Just pop that core out. We'll take the skins, put them in there. I do need to put something right here maybe. <laughs> so, so it's not too messy there. Okay. And I'll probably put you guys on fast forward so you don't have to actually watch me do every single one. So that's probably boring, but you get the idea. Let's do it one more time. You take the apple, you smush it into those little things there, and you just start turning it. And this little piece right here is what peels it. Just push out the core. Whoops. Core there and peels there. Perfect. All right. Fast forward. So we've gotten a few of our apples done and I'm gonna go ahead and start cooking them down on the stove. Um, I just add like a little tiny bit of water just so they don't burn initially, but I don't add much because this is gonna get pretty juicy in here. So we'll start cooking these down for our applesauce and then later I will blend them up with an immersion blender. All right. So our apples are cooking down nicely. They've only been on here for about 10 or 15 minutes and they're already breaking down really well, but you can see how much liquid is in there. And we're definitely gonna need to cook off a lot of that liquid um, because we don't want a real runny applesauce. We want it to be nice and thick. You could also leave it a little bit chunky if you liked it like that. I only add lemon juice to this for the canning pop process. I don't add any sugar at all. Um, I just prefer it without. I think it's sweet enough. Um, it's up to you if you do want to add more sugar, but we don't. So let's keep going. I still have some more apples to um, core and cut, and I'm just adding them in as we go.
so our applesauce is almost ready. I have a few uh, more chunks in here, and I think I'm going to kind of leave it chunky. I'm not even going to blend it up at all with my immersion blender. I'm just going to um, I'm going to cook it up just a little bit longer until a little a little bit of this breaks down just a little bit more. But then I'm just going to leave it kind of thick. And if there's some pieces in there, then that'll be fine. I think that'll be okay. I think it looks really, really good. I've already added in my lemon juice. I do one tablespoon per uh, pint of liquid. So if you're doing a quart size jar, two tablespoons per quart of uh, lemon juice. So I'm just taking my hot jars out of the uh, water bath canner. Now I'm going to fill them up with the applesauce. We'll put our lids on and then we'll process these in the water bath canner um, for about 20 minutes. So these are done processing now and I'm going to go ahead and lift those out. I already turned off the water and, or turned off the burner and let it um, just kind of stop boiling on its own. I'm going to lift them out. The main thing with canning is you just don't want to sh do shock temperature changes, massive temperature changes. So the more gradual you can do that, the better because glass breaks when it gets shocked. Whether it's hot or cold, it doesn't really matter. It's that shock and change in temperature that breaks the glass. So these look amazing. I saved a little bit in that jar. I'm gonna have that for dinner. I'm gonna have potato pancakes with applesauce. That is a traditional German recipe that my mom always used to make, and so I'm gonna make it for myself tonight. So far, we've gotten five quarts. I'm doing another batch over here, so I should get hopefully another four or five quarts, and that is a great haul for this time. Super pleased. So guys, we've pretty much done it. Apples are gone. All of the okra has been dehydrated. Um, it's still in the dehydrator now, but it'll be done tomorrow. All of the peppers have been frozen or put into our fermentation for hot sauce. Um, our last batch of canning is almost finished with the applesauce. And then the last thing that I have to do is uh, pears, but those are gonna still be a few days. So I think we got everything accomplished. I put away the onions into the pantry as well as the sweet potatoes. So. We accomplished all of that in one day. I am so excited that it got finished. I started at nine o'clock and now it's about five o'clock in the afternoon. So it's been a super, super long day for me, but I'm glad to have gotten it all done. I'll show a few uh, clips after this of all of the finished products, but hopefully this gave you guys a little bit of inspiration to get in there and preserve your harvest so that it's not wasted. Um, I can't wait to see you guys next time here at Rowan Co. Farms. Um, please hit that like and subscribe button down below and join us again next time. Thanks.